Hello and welcome. In this video, we will present an inside look into data sets. We'll examine the data of an imported S parameter model. We'll display the imported data. We'll examine a nonlinear data set. And we'll generate new variables or measurements within the data set. We'll import a swept data file and then use the snapshot feature in data sets. Data sets are basically the containers of data. They contain both linear and nonlinear information, including S parameters, DC currents, harmonic balance, and time domain. Whether from a current simulation or imported data, they serve as a source for our graphic displays as well as for data manipulation, new variables, new measurements, and can form the basis of a new user model. Let's start by importing an S parameter file. From the File menu, we'll select Import. Notice the various file formats that we can import. And we'll select uh, S parameter file. And then here we see a transistor S parameter file. We'll import that. You see the data set appears in our workspace tree. If I double click on that, we now see the variables associated with that file, such as the frequencies over which the uh, data was taken, from 100 megahertz to 4 gigahertz. Here is a list of the S parameters. In this case, we're just displaying the magnitudes, but the complex values are available. YAP is the admittance parameters uh, for the port, complex admittance parameters. And then finally, Z of port is the impedances under which the uh, S parameters were measured, in this case, just 50 ohms. So let's close this out. And uh, let me show you how we export data. Let's say we've made a measurement and we want to export or save our file, which is do an export, click on that, and that opens up our save dialog and we can rename whatever file that we uh, want, wish and then save that. Also, we can also export the, uh, the uh, data set to a library if we want to use that for model generation. Now, what if we want to display the data? One way to display it is just to go to the data set, right click, new graph, and now we have all four S parameters displayed uh, simultaneously. So what if I only wanted to look at uh, one set of S parameters? So I can double click on my uh, uh, graph and then just remove the ones that I don't, I'm not interested in viewing. And I'll do that all for uh, except for S11. And we'll display that. And here you see rectangular graph. If I want to change that to a Smith, that's simple enough. There you go. Let's now look at another type of data set. In this case, we're going to look at the nonlinear uh, harmonic balance data set, which is saved in XML format. I'll select HB1. Here's the data set that appears in our workspace tree. If I double click on that, you'll notice there's a lot more information than there was in you know, S parameter file. Here, the frequency refers to the index, that is, zeros for DC, two is the uh, index for the fundamental, and so forth, or the various harmonics. One interesting feature of data sets is the ability to create uh, new measurements as well and new variables. If I right click, add new variable, you see here comes the dialog. I can name a variable. In this case, I will call it my var or var variable. And then formula well, will make that equal to 10 plus the product of 10 times 2. Okay. We can use this variable now for, uh, uh, for measurements uh, later on or display. Here you see it displayed here. I'm going to delete it. Um, right click and then just delete. Uh, but let me show you some other measurements that were made or uh, variables that were defined. P out. If I double click on that, you'll see it's defined as the power of the second frequency index at port 2. Second frequency index is our fundamental or an index of 2. P in, again, index of 2 uh, at port 1. So we're taking the, uh, the power at both ports to the fundamental. And here's another variable that was defined, P gain, as the ratio of P out to P in, which would be the power gain in this case. So we can plot directly, as we did before, from our data set or add it to a table. Another way to do that uh, is just to plot it directly from, uh, onto a graph. So what I'll do is go up to the workspace tree, and I'll select Add Graph. And here we'll select the data set, which is HB1. It's the only data set we have. Add. See the measurements listed here. We'll go to the more measurements and then the power at the port, port 2 in this case. Let me select OK and OK. And here is the spectrum at the output port for uh, 
a simulation uh, for five harmonics. So if we click on these, we can put a marker on it and look at the ratio of the two signals and so forth. Um, if I want to look at the data in a different way, such as time domain, I'll go to the Edit menu, More, and in this case we'll look at the waveform at port 2, and click OK, OK, and here you see the waveform. Slightly distorted, but nevertheless, uh, that's our output waveform. OK, what I'd like to show you now is the results of a swept data, or a swept harmonic balance analysis. We'll import a separate data set, XML, and it'll be swept one data, and you see it appears here in a workspace tree. I double click on that. It has most of the same information that we had in the previous data set, except now for things like P out and PN, there's a range of values for each of the frequencies. So if we swept frequency, and for our variables PN and P out that we defined, we have more than one value. I'll double click on the graph, and I'm going to have uh, the data set point to the swept data set. And for more measurements, we're going to select the voltage waveform at the output port. And we press OK. And what we'll see now here is uh, obviously this, the values of the waveforms for each of the swept uh, frequencies. We'll double click on that again. And what we're going to do is edit that and we're going to add a power measurement. Here we'll select the power at output port, and you'll notice that our variables that we defined are also available. We'll select P gain and press OK, and we'll look at how power versus frequency in our harmonic balance analysis. You see how it peaks at uh, 1800 and so, uh, 1900 megahertz. Okay, so if we did a simulation and we want to save our data set, all we have to do is right click and export, and then rename the data set if we wish. Um, like you see here, and then just save it. Uh, we can also use the data set and copy that to a new library if we wanted to develop a new model based on measured or simulated data. So uh, the data set gives you great control on all the data. As a final example, what I'd like to show you is an additional feature of data sets and where we can take a snapshot of the data. So here you see the uh, original data set from this simulation with the S parameters and, and frequency and so forth. If I right click and then select Snapshot, it takes a, uh, it develops a duplicate data set for the original data that you see here called Snap. And as I select that, you can see it, it contains the same data from our original data set. The difference is this will not change when we do future simulations. So let me plot the other data set here, uh, the Snap or the Copy. S21, and of course, as we would expect, they overlay one another, and they do. So you can think of this as a way of creating a template uh, for future measurements or comparison. So as I tune uh, our capacitor here, you can see the original versus the tuned state. So in conclusion, understanding the structure of data sets will help you to maximize the use of the data for evaluation, comparison, and even optimizing your current design. I thank you for watching.